I'll get something right. Uh, I want to clarify how these files are before this bench this morning. These three files, which were filed in Kiruboya, that is 13, 14, and 15 of 2024, had some interim conservatory orders issued by the court. Further to the issuance of those orders, the learned judge made further orders requesting the Honorable Chief Justice to internal a bench. Those files were transmitted on the basis of that order to the Honorable Chief Justice's office on the 18th of October. On that very day, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice empaneled this bench to hear those matters. Thereafter, applications were filed online. I think you are all aware that we are operating online. Applications were filed online. When those applications were filed online, those are the ones which this bench gave directions for these matters to appear before us today. That is why we're here, and that is the trail, that is the paper trail as to why we're here this morning. So I reiterate the position taken by the presiding judge that we will not be comfortable dealing with any other files, even if it's related to this file, which we did not give the elections for it to appear here today. So I think we can now proceed on the basis of that clarification. Thank you, Judge. My Lord, uh, just, just a minute, please. Perhaps just to add that it's the, the numerous other files that were coming up, I think the process Now there is no consolidation. Uh, the direction from this court was very specific on three different files. Uh,
file has been integrated into the Nairobi system. Integrated uh, into the Nairobi system. Uh, because we, we cannot be then be dealing with a file that is reading everywhere. Because of course, if there is no integration in your sheet, then there is a rat that is made. Uh, Mr. 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 Let me answer you. You said that records speak for themselves. And uh, for record, matters which came from, from, from Karagoya came with their own record. And the record states here that the matter herein is consolidated with petition E014 of 2024 and the same to be delivered in the Chief Justice for empanelment of bench in terms of the ruling in petition E014 of 2024, a copy of which shall be placed on this file. So your own matter coming from Kerugoya was already consolidated. Those proceedings which took place in Kerugoya consolidated these two files. So let that not be an issue here. Uh, on the directions issues on 11th by Judge Richard Mongo, these were the directions. The petitions, the petitioner in E 014 2024 to serve their amended petition on all parties. Similarly, the petitioner in E 013 2024 to serve their petition on all parties. Respondents to the petition to file their responses by noon of 17th of October 2024. Given that the files are being routed to Honorable Chief Justice forthwith, the party's response to the amended petition and petition E013 of 2024 may be filed in Karugoya under the Karugoya case tracking system online, where upon they shall be forwarded to Nairobi. So these proceedings took place in Karugoya. So this court has not consolidated any matter. Petition number E14. E014 and petition number E013 are hereby consolidated. The parties who appeared before the Kurogoya court were given those orders. Those were your orders. And uh, with, with your permission, President Judge, uh, the, the reason why uh, Nairobi has not opened another file to put together all the files from Kirugoya is this. Going by the orders which were issued by Kirugoya court, there was a specific order that because of the transmission, parties will still file their documents under the Kirugoya CTS, that is the court tracking system. We had to hold on to that so that not to disadvantage any of the parties until we appear today. Those are some of the things we will deal with here and make orders to the Honorable Deputy Registrar to formalize that. So there should be no cause for alarm. We will put everything into its place. I presume now we may now raise the issues that we want to raise, particularly arising from the issues in Kerouac. And uh, I do not know... then proceed and take Karam on... They were consolidated, so we don't take further quorum on this matter. Uh, the Attorney General, I don't know, I had indicated to the court earlier, I need to raise some clarification. Section 7 of the Attorney You had read the assumption to speak. Mm -hmm. Does it override my right to represent my clients? I will repeat it. Can she then say her piece? I say mine. No, which matter are we now dealing with? <laughs> we have 0115. We have 0115. I wanted to say that yes. the only matters before this court are the matters which had expired orders. The matters that came from the Goya E13 and E14 were so not consolidated. They were filed before impeachment and they have no conservative orders. They, they, they do. E13, we have E15. E15 has to be But E13 and E14, although from Kerugoya, they were filed before impeachment and they had no conservative. I hope uh, I can then be heard without further interference. 
My Lord, uh, My Lord, I'm leading the number of advocates in this matter from Kirinaga, E015. Kelgura 15? Yes, Kelgura 15. Kelgura 15, yes. Yes. My Lord, uh, the clarification that uh, I seek to raise uh, emanates against this general background. The first one, uh, my Lord, is that there was a sitting on Saturday, which the court has since explained how that sitting occurred. With regard to that sitting, my client wrote a letter to the Honorable the Chief Justice, which has been placed on record in an affidavit in an application before you, that uh, protesting amongst other things, that the practice in which a Saturday sitting would be convened for purposes of hearing the executive and organs of government that have violated fundamental rights is a practice that is prohibited under the 2010 Constitution. That letter is on the record. We do not trust that the Honorable the Chief Justice could actually do that because she knows the history about what used to happen. But we now learn your Lordship, sir, that you are convened by the Honorable Lady Justice Wayne, the Deputy Chief Justice. Lady, my Lord, arising from that, a one, a legal issue, and a matter of Article 150. My Lord, under the law, and we do this every day, I practice public law every day, arising from that issue of the communication, speaking for 015, we expected that the general procedure would be, and that is what the orders implies, and required us to come on Thursday this week, that when the Chief Justice appoints a bench, she will do it in writing, as required under Article 47 of the Constitution. We would be given the number of those judges and the day that they will be sitting. This day, we have not received officially because even when the city happened on Saturday, my Lord Mayor, I, I think I have a right to raise those issues. I have a right to, be to respond. May I just, just give uh, the fellow guy time to. Mongai, boy guy. I just want it for good order. Okay, my Lord. is that a okay. clarification? Mongai? Boy guy. I am Mongai. I believe he will speak in response as soon as I'm done. Proceed. Let me finish. My Lord, I wanted to assist the court uh, because my learned friend has, I believe, filed a substantive application so that the court does not hear speeches in the court. My learned friend should identify what application he is ventilating so that even we taking notes know what we should be responding to. That's all I want to Maraja, say. Maraja, Professor Bouigai was a former attorney general. I respect him. He was also my teacher, my professor for criminal law. But my Lord, uh, the point that I wish to make uh, is that I am acting for specific clients today. I had asked the, the court. I should be heard in silence. He will respond. And I had indicated that we have formal applications. What we are raising is an issue that is arising from what Judge Murima has indicated. We could not put it earlier in an application. So if I may proceed, my Lord, the issue is this, that we expected a notification in writing that these judges have been appointed and they would seek on a particular day. All those notifications, including in cases of abductions, have been that the first sitting by a bench has been on a working day. All applications, and I'm aware of this as a fact. So then the first clarifications would be on what basis would uh, 
in an application by the executive be convened on a Saturday. That is a substantive issue because of the second reason that our background that we are giving. But under the 2010 constitutions, the constitutions provide for the Bill of Rights. My Lord, under the former constitution, my Lord, under the former constitution, we used to have a practice in which we had an officially a bill of immunities for the state where the constitution, the state could conduct its business on weekends and outside court sitting hours. But not because of that reason, that's why I'm saying, this we are sitting here pursuant to the orders made on a Saturday. And my Lord, we are also sitting here pursuant to an order made by the Honorable the Chief Justice. My Lord, for purposes of Article 165, I believe it's four, of the Constitution, the powers of the Chief Justice to appoint a bench is a substantive power. It is not administrative. This power, my lord, cannot be shared by the Deputy Chief Justice or with the Deputy Chief Justice. And because it cannot be shared with the Deputy Chief Justice, it is the reason why I say two things that our instructions is that we must move this court immediately to set aside that order on the basis of its unconstitutionality. The Chief Justice of Kenya cannot appoint anyone, any judge, pursuant to Article 165 4 of the Constitution. And we shall place here uh, the Deputy Chief Justice are formal applications. Issue number two, my lords, arising from that. You have applied us with this charge, the directions of empanelment. My lord, I am saying that we shall make a formal applications to discharge that order made by the Chief Justice, Deputy Chief Justice. That's what we are indicating. My lord, my lord number two, and it is implied in our in the applications for disqualifications that we have filed. Number two is that we raise the issue that for purposes of the Saturday city and today's city, and the thing is out there in the streets and the Republic of Kenya, is that a special bench would be appointed for purposes of vacating the orders that we have made. My Lord, we, I have a lot of respect for all of you that have appeared before previously. But my Lord, pursuant to my instructions that that would be the case, three issues worries us. Number one, we had a sitting on Saturday, the practice of the former constitution, where the executive enjoyed special privileges. Number two, my Lord, is that we have confirmed that the only files that are before you are files where we have interim conservatory orders. So that, my Lord, uh, and it is important that this issue we speak for the 190 and with a clear conscience. Two things. My Lord, the first thing would be this, that if this matter is going to be conducted, like today on the basis that only those matters where the Attorney General is itching to set aside conservatory orders, are the ones that are going to be had, there would be something wrong because other cases that are even officially before you and probably assigned to you by the actual Chief Justice of Kenya are still pending. So what was this where you prioritize the state as it used to happen those days before we had a new constitution? Issue number two, my lord, is this, the issue of bias. And this is biased by the Honorable... The, the I, I think, Mr. Mungai, uh, you are going beyond ordinary comments. If you have an application which addresses those prayers or those issues, I think you... Let me raise the other issue that yes. does not have to do with those prayers. 
Well, Lord, the, the last issue, therefore, would be this. If assuming that cases that were supposed to appear before you are cases that came after the impeachment, my Lord, there are about four matters, one of them in which I appear. And this is a fundamental issue. That matter is coming on Thursday. Okay? The an express order of the court that has not been set aside. The question would be this, for purposes of good order, and for purposes of us making this application, why would it be difficult, even for this bench, to order all cases, because that is a right to equality under Article 27 of the Constitution, that deals with the same subject matter, come on a specific day where all parties have notice so that even the issues that we are raising against the Deputy Chief Justice can be formally put on record so that we do not have this anxiety that somebody is speaking off record. But Lord, why I say as I go to see it, why I say this is important is this. The matters before you over and over again, the repeated question has been, uh, the right to fair hearing is being sacrificed. Under Article 25 of the Constitution, fair hearing cannot be taken away even during an emergency. It is an absolute right in this country. So what, my Lord, arising from that, the question that uh, we would like us to be addressed is that to say that we are going to conduct matters by installment and the only justification for the chosen installments being that the Deputy Chief Justice is biased for the state and has therefore constituted a bench that can be able to hear the state's application is clearly not permissible. Mr. So that my Lord, I, I urge I, the court I, I would to not, hold. I would not, uh, please, we should not bring the DCJ uh, conduct at this stage because I think uh, that the DCJ is trying her administrative duties the way it should be done. Uh, that is not if you have, if you have, if you have an issue with that, please don't make a generalized, generalized complaint. Well, this is not generalized. It is in writing, and we are making a formal application to ensure everything is done on record. And that, they, they, that right, as I said, down, the issue of that right is that we have had a situation before the National Assembly, before the Senate, it didn't seem to matter. Before the High Court, my lords, I submit the right to fair hearing under the Constitution must count for something. <coughs> Otherwise, Article 25 would effectively have been amended to please the state. I urge you respectfully. We we'll hear you. My Lord, sir, just to add on what my other friend has submitted on, I'll give you. Yes, I mean, with, with the permission of the deciding, I wish to say that. I wish to uh, make this clarification. The matters which are before us today, the three matters which are before us today, are not here on the basis that some conservatory orders were issued per se. I have stated and I'm repeating. The reason why these matters are before us today is that after the issuance of the conservatory orders, subsequent applications were filed. The applications were filed after the empanelment. Those applications were filed online. We deal with matters online. And it is on the basis of only the applications which were filed and dealt with online. That is why we are here today. So I want to correct the insinuation that we are here only to deal with uh, uh, the, 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 I mean the matters in which conservatory orders were issued. We don't know how many conservatory orders were issued. We are only here to deal with specifically the application of file which came to our attention. So kindly let us be as factual as possible. We will deal with all the matters, I can assure you. There is no issue about any of the things you are raising. If you have any substantive issue, we are here. If the application for recusal, there is no problem. 
we will hear. If we feel we have to get out of this, there should be no problem. Yes. We are all here to defend the constitution of Kenya. So don't you worry. Don't don't you worry. Give us time. Let's take this thing step by step, and we will do the best we can as a bench. Allow us to worry when we are crowded. You know, when you argue, uh, like uh, the way Mr. Mbwe has argued, that court start on Saturday, you are arguing on both sides of the court. You know that we work, we work online, and most of you know that matters reach us any time, at any time, whether at night, and that is what the new constitution and the e finding system has brought to this country. So when you argue selectively, you mislead the people. You must mislead, you mislead the out people outside there that call start on a Saturday. There's nothing like that. We attend to matters online as and when they come. But let we have had Mr. Murray, we let us not be an exchange between between the court and yourself because we are really very neutral party. Let us hear also from, from the other side. What we haven't, we haven't really. We have, we have not, we have in not in E015 in the report, the deputy president is the second respondent, first respondent in fact. We haven't said our piece, and Alicia Oboya will be making some issue. But may not do give us this avenue. This E015 in Pirogoya, the orders of your brother, Mr. Justice Mungo, were given at 4 p.m. Why did the file come from Kirinyaga to go to the Deputy Chief Justice? It is two hours drive from Kirinyaga. When did the Deputy Chief Justice sit in the middle of the night on Friday? To give that <laughs> permit us, permit us to articulate these issues for the sake of the nation. We are not just dealing with the removal and the challenge to the removal of the deputy president. We are dealing about the president that will be set for the removal of deputy presidents in future and the removal of presidents in future. Delicious. Uh, 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 uh. My Lord, my Lord Presiding Judge, I want to renew my request that the court permit us to be ordered. We are now about to hear a second speech, a third speech, a fourth speech. This court, as we have been told by the senior most advocate here, is a court of record. What application are we hearing? so that we on this side can prepare to respond. We cannot respond to speeches. There is an application here, if I may, the Honorable P.K. Moite. There is an application for the recusal of judges. It is the right of my learned colleagues to bring such an application. But having brought it, they should then confine themselves to it. Then we can respond to it. But we cannot sit here the whole afternoon listening to speech after speech intended for another audience other than this one. Um, there is no other audience. Let, 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 let us be clear on this. The applications before this court, we have stated which applications are in this court for hearing today. We have no authority to call on any other file, because files, when they, there's a prayer for impanelment of a bench, those files go direct to the hundred of the Chief Justice. So we have no authority to call any other file to ourselves. That will be quite unprocedural. So what we have here are the three files which we mentioned, in which there are interim orders where one party is seeking to leave those orders. If there is an application for recusal or whatever it is, I think you really need to put it on record so that we deal with it and before any other thing, we can deal with it and uh, dispose of, of it one way or the other. But uh, I don't think.